Ever since the Nintendo Switch came out in March 2017, poor internet performance has plagued users worldwide. And today, I'm going to talk about how you can fix that. After the intro, of course. Alright, so I'm not going to go real in-depth of how the Nintendo Switch Online system works, but here are the important bits. When you play Switch Online, the servers are peer-to-peer. -peer. So when you match up against someone in Smash Ultimate, your Switches agree on whose internet is more stable, and that person becomes the host. All data sent between your two Switches, and actually the entire internet, are broken into little groups called packets. A multitude of factors can affect how a packet gets sent over the internet, including stability, speed, and latency of a network. Packets take the quickest route the computer sees fit at the time of transmission, which can change through the duration of a game, for example. So it's not unheard of for packets to be received out of order or missing altogether. Games like Call of Duty have code to manage this. Chances are if you are sending packets to move forward and one packet goes missing during your movement, you still want it to move forward. They try to assume what you wanted to do in the case a packet goes missing. And it seems Smash Ultimate, in a lot of Switch Online titles, comes to a screeching halt if some of these packets go missing. That's why you can be playing and the game just freezes out of nowhere. Wolf then explains this in his video, linked down in the description of how the Nintendo Switch Online works and why it's so bad. I encourage you to go check it out if you want to know more. So out of all that tech babble, if we can increase the speed, increase the stability, and decrease the latency, we should have a better Switch Online experience. The hands down absolute best way to do this is through a LAN adapter. So if you're able to plug your Switch into your router or Ethernet switch, do that. But let's say there's no Ethernet port around your Switch and you can't upgrade your router, which is also a good idea. And since we know the implementation of the Wi-Fi chip in the Switch is horrendous, your bad Switch internet may not mean you have bad internet. In the same exact location as my Switch, I get nearly three times the network performance from a different device with a better wireless chip. So if we could leverage the better connection of that device and feed it to the Switch, that'd be golden, right? Well, that's where the concept of an Ethernet bridge comes in with a Raspberry Pi. You can do an Ethernet bridge with a Mac or PC too, but I wanted to use the Raspberry Pi as a kind of set it and forget it solution, and it was just sitting around collecting dust. I actually had a friend who couldn't play Smash Online because his lag was so bad, but then he used an Ethernet bridge with his PC and it was playable. Before doing any of the steps ahead, I would encourage you to do a speed test of your internet from your phone or laptop to see if your internet really is bad in your gaming area and it's not just your Switch. The first thing we'll want to do is install Raspbian on a micro SD card using the official Raspberry Pi imager. Then after you boot into Raspbian, navigate to this GitHub page whose link will be in the description. Install DNS mask Q and then the Wi-Fi to ETH root dot sh thing. Finally, we are going to configure one last setting. Make sure the names of our network interfaces are correct by using the command ifconfig in the terminal to list them all. Next, we have to specify the DHCP range of our router. DHCP is a protocol where your router automatically assigns local IP addresses to devices that connect to it. So we have to tell the script what range of IPs are good to use for our ethernet bridge. This is usually 192.168.1.100 through 192.168.1.149. Let's save our changes and make the file executable. Then if we run our script, we should be good to go. Connect an ethernet cable to the Raspberry Pi and to the switch using a LAN adapter. Hopefully your connection is both quicker and more stable as the Wi-Fi implementation on the Raspberry Pi is better than it is on the Switch, but your mileage may vary. A quick showcase to show the improvement between standard old wireless and our Ethernet bridge will be me downloading a 10 gigabyte game, Pokemon Shield. I also threw in the Ethernet connection directly to the router just to show you how it's the best possible solution. As expected, the connection from our switch to our router comes first, our ethernet bridge comes second, and wireless is way behind finishing last. I also did 10 network connection tests to compare the internet speeds. Here, upload speed stays about the same, but download speed is greatly improved when using the Raspberry Pi ethernet bridge. 
but even that is no match for an ethernet connection directly to the router. Also, if we look at the average values for all these tests, yet again, direct ethernet comes out on top, but an average download speed of 16.54 megabits per second is way better than wireless's average of 7.16 megabits per second. So yeah, hopefully this helps some of you guys out at getting better internet on your switch. And that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching.